dragon-type Pokémon are some of the strongest, most vicious, and powerful Pokémon in existence. They've become fan favorites of many trainers all over the world. One such trainer is Bird Keeper Toby, who we'll be interviewing today. Hey, Pokemon Masters, Birdkeeper Toby here, and have you ever wondered why there's only two dragons in the whole of Kanto? I know I have. Birdkeeper Toby is a ten-year-old boy from Pallet Town, and he is fascinated with dragon-type Pokemon. He is also known for making Pokemon theories. Oh, Lance is like a personal hero of mine. I mean, he's got this cape that's like whoosh, and his hair that's like whoa, and he's got, I mean, he's got dragon Pokemon. He's got a Charizard, although... Charizard technically isn't a dragon, so... It's true. Dragon Pokemon are hard to come by in the Kanto region, so even their champion who specializes in the type does not have access to many Dragon Pokemon and has to use similar modern-day relatives to the type, like Gyarados, Charizard, and even the recently resurrected Aerodactyl. Dragon Pokemon don't seem to thrive well in Kanto. The Pokemon Executor, said to originate from Alola, thrives there due to the sunshine. But it's not just their height that it loses here in Kanto, but also its dragon typing. Could this really all be due to the sunlight, or are other forces at work here? Aliens. No, really, really, it, they are alien Pokemon. I once went on a field trip to Mount Moon and I saw a Clefairy and a Jigglypuff and I was told that they had come from the moon. What else do you think they evolved from the Moonstone? Oh, and there's Mr. Mime. My mom has a Mr. Mime, actually. He lives with us and helps out around the house ever since Dad left. Anyway, I've never seen a Mr. Mime in the wilds of Kanto. So before the aliens crash landed, there probably weren't fairy Pokemon here. Bird Keeper Toby somehow makes an excellent point. There are only three types of fairy Pokemon native to the Kanto region. Mr. Mime, the Clefairy line, and the Jigglypuff line. And Mr. Mime cannot be found in the wild here, only traded in. And the other two Pokemon apparently came from space, so it's possible there did used to be many more Dragon Pokemon here. However, the environmental changes have forced them to the brink of extinction. I'm telling you, all over the world where you'd find Jigglypuff or Clefairy, you don't find Dragon Pokemon. Well, apart from the really cool ones like Kirin, but that's a legendary Pokemon, so that doesn't count. But like in the Alolan Islands, there's like this Axew that you have to island scan, but you can only find one of it, and that's on the same mountain where there's a Clefairy. Aside from that, you don't really find any Dragon Pokemon where you'd find Clefairy or Jigglypuff. Worldwide, any locations where Jigglypuff and Clefairy have shown up from space, Dragon Pokemon are virtually non-existent. The closest to an exception is Meteor Falls, where many Dragon Tamers train their Pokemon and some say the ancient tribe known as the Dragonids still visit. But even here, in this legendary training ground for dragons, the only Dragon Pokemon you can find is Bagon, and even they are tucked away and hard to come by deep in the depths of the cave, likely scared away by the Jigglypuff just outside. All the other regions already had fairy-type Pokemon, but Kanto didn't. So if some just suddenly crash-landed from out of space, that's gonna like mess up the whole environment and all the other surrounding Pokemon or whatever. I mean, it's just like the time that they brought in Young Goose into the Alolan Islands to get rid of the Rattatas, but then the Rattatas had to adapt to survive because the whole ecosystem was messed up. I mean, those Rattatas have to be in the top percentage of Rattatas. They weren't. However, yet again, Toby somehow hits on something here. When a new predator is introduced into a food chain, it can have dire consequences. Ecological systems usually take thousands to millions of years to find balance. Introduce a new species of Pokemon like Young Goose, and the other creatures are forced to adapt rapidly. But what then if the creature is a whole new type that the wild Pokemon in a certain region simply cannot deal with? Likely it would cause an extinction event for any types that have adapted and evolved unchallenged. In Kanto, this was the dragon type. You can still find Dratini and Dragonair very rarely in the Safari Zone in Fuchsia City. You can find Execute there as well, and they'd normally evolve into the dragon type Executor, so it seems likely that it's all part of some conservation program. And it makes sense, because there's the Poison Gym Leader there in Fuchsia City too, and Poison is strong against fairies, so hopefully the dragons are going to make a comeback for my Pokemon adventure. Aren't you, like, 23? What? No, I'm 10, I'm 10, I'm a... Sure, man. The story of Dragon Pokemon in Kanto is a tragic one. However, with conservation efforts being made, they may see a return in the future. 
But this isn't the only mystery of the Kanto region. Join us in the next episode for a look into Kanto's secret war. Now more than ever, a special thank you to my Patreons of the month, the people who support this channel and keep it going. In particular, I have to give a massive shout out to Domino Thief and Andros Lee Fay who have gone above and beyond to help out the channel. Links to below as to where you can become a Patreon today.